Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. Over the last couple of weeks, we have had our attention on one specific YouTuber, Colleen Ballinger, and the slew of fans coming forward about all of the very creepy and problematic things that she has done over the last 10 or so years. And while she has been getting all of that heat and attention and has been singing her apologies with a ukulele, a different YouTuber decided that this was the perfect time to try and make a comeback and redeem himself for very similar accusations. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down. That YouTuber would be James Charles, and we're going to talk about that today. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. If you have not followed the James Charles saga, if you were not on the James Charles train of the, you know, early 2010s, James Charles is a makeup YouTuber. I think he blew up in the early 2010s and then was like big 2014, 2015, I would say. He is very flamboyant. He starts off every video with like, hey, Hey sisters! Hi sisters! And you either love him or you think that his voice sounds like nails on a chalkboard. I am in the latter half of that group. Anyway, a few years ago, videos started going around on social media accusing him of acting inappropriately with minor fans. Again, very similar to what happened with Colleen. But these were not just rumors. These young men had videos and screenshots. And here are some of the videos. Damn it. I've been banned from Dave and Buster's. So that's a very short video, but it is a ton of screenshots taken by another phone of James sending Snapchats to this person. They are sexual in nature. All of these are sexual in nature. Here's another one. These are just two examples. These boys were 16 and 15, respectively. And when all of this went public, James Charles freaked out and said that all of these young men, because there were more than just two, said that all these young men had lied about their age to him. And one of them admitted that he did lie about his age. He was 16. He said that he was 18 and he privately apologized to James and said that he wanted attention. But the other in this video said that he never lied about his age. He told James that he was 15 years old and James was still sending him sexual Snapchats, sexual messages on Instagram on Snapchat. These are just two of the six boys who came forward saying that they were underage. This one posted on Twitter, not on TikTok, and said, in the video, I introduced myself and I said I was 17. In the photo he sent, he continued to flirt and said that he thought I was a catfish and that I was cute. It never got sexual. I just wanted to put this out there as many guys have had similar experiences with him. Like you saw, he went on to say this was not sexual, but James continued to flirt and give him attention for many, many other messages. They went on, they started this kind of friendship. Obviously, this guy was enamored that James Charles was giving him attention because there's an obvious power imbalance there. And then allegedly, according to some of these young men and then other fans, he was also sending unsolicited nudes to fans and then asking for photos and videos in return. And it is even worse that they were 15, 16, 17 years old. Creepy regardless. And it's important to note that this was not the first time things like this had happened with James Charles. In 2019, another huge beauty influencer by the name of Toddy cut ties with James. They had been friends previously because she said that he had been preying on young straight men. So now we're in 2023. How does this man still have a platform? Considering that this all started in 2019, there were more accusations with evidence in 2021. Well, it's because it's 2023 and we excuse this behavior. It is very normal. Everybody just brushes it aside and we move on. But needless to say, James Charles is in the doghouse. I wonder if he's eating kibble. If he is eating kibble, he needs rough greens to sprinkle on top of that. Now, I think you guys know there is very little that I love more than my dogs. And that is the reason why I am so excited about my sponsor, Rough Greens. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is focused on improving the health of every dog in America. And we all know by now the traditional dog food, traditional kibble is dead food. It is not nutritious. It is not healthy because nutritious, healthy food is not brown and dried. It is green. So let Rough Greens boost your dog's food back to life. Rough Greens is a supplement that contains all of the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs. And you do not need to go out and buy some expensive new fancy dog food for your dogs to get them healthy. You just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every day, whether you're sprinkling it on kibble or on fresh food, it will work. Dog owners everywhere are raving about Rough Greens. It supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, boosts energy levels, and so much more. And as you guys know, Rocky and Tater have been eating Rough Greens for the last few months. They love it. Your dog will too. And the team at Rough Greens is so confident that their products will improve your dog's health that they are offering my viewers a free Jumpstart trial bag so that your dog can try it. And this free Jumpstart trial bag can be at your door in just a few business days. So go to freeroughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG to redeem that offer. Again, that is freeroughgreens.com slash Cooper or call 877-66-MY-DOG today. Guys, I say this every single time. It should be a no-brainer. It's free. Try it out. Your dogs deserve it. James Charles, 
is a dog but does not deserve it at all. Now, in classic YouTuber fashion, James made an apology video in 2021 and it was titled Taking Accountability, but he deleted it almost immediately after posting it. Now, obviously there are clips of this all over the place and he was just saying like, I didn't know that these people were actually underage. I'm so sorry, I was just desperate. Like, yeah, no shit, you're desperate. You are an attention whore. That is why you are doing all of this and you are a creep. But it's just weird that he immediately took it down, wanted to move on, wanted everybody to forget. Fast forward to years to 2023 and James is definitely not the darling of the internet like everybody makes fun of him he posts a TikTok and people are just you know ratting him out for one thing or another but he has not been canceled into oblivion he still has millions and millions of fans millions of subscribers over all of his platforms but apparently that is not enough for him so he is now releasing a new self-funded makeup line called painted and he wanted to change the narrative about himself so he got cosmopolitan to do a profile on him and it has backfired big time it is quite honestly the worst thing he could have done for himself or that Cosmo could have done in this situation, although it is shedding a lot of light on how terrible he is and everybody is being reminded of that. But here's the tweet where they promoted the piece. After two years in influencer purgatory, James Charles is back to debut a self-funded makeup line. Is the internet ready for his relaunch? Read G. Bluntstone's wide-ranging deep dive here. Okay, so apparently, according to Cosmopolitan, preying on young men is influencer purgatory. That is where we are at right now. And then they posted this photo under the tweet and said, James Charles would like to be uncanceled, please. Oh, you would. That's great. Good for you. I'm sure a lot of people would like to be uncanceled, but you actually did some terrible, terrible things. And people did not hold back. Somebody said, crazy that you're doing propaganda for a groomer. Another person said, influencer purgatory. He literally admitted on camera that he propositioned minors. He can stay in his influencer purgatory. This is incredibly disturbing. He is an adult male who admitted to sending and soliciting nude photos to and from minors, and you're glorifying him. He is a child predator. Do better. Somebody else said, I think he has made enough money to retire and live quietly why do they want fame so bad and he did he did make enough money he paid off his la mansion and his parents mortgage with the money that he got from brands breaking contracts and deals with him early as all of this was going on he is an attention whore he wants to be in the spotlight. He can't not be. That's why he kept making videos. That's why he deleted his apology video and came back trying to pretend like it didn't happen. Now, we just have to read some of the article because it is the most ridiculous puff piece ever. But these are just my top moments from the piece. First of all, he talks about those broken deals that I just mentioned, and he said that he pocketed a small amount from the deal that allowed him to buy his house and pay off his parents' mortgage. Just a small amount. You, you don't say that in 2023 when the economy is absolutely dog shit and people cannot afford to pay their rent or get groceries because your house in California is $7 million. That is not a small amount. I am so sorry you are out of touch. Now, he also rationalized his bad behavior and explained why he was sliding into young fans' DMs. Finding dating prospects in the rarefied influencer celebrity strata he eventually vaulted into was tough. Quote, quickly, please, name five famous male gay celebrities from the ages of 20 to 25. You can't because they don't exist. So the internet, once again, he says, became an avenue for exploration. Oh, that's what we're calling it now. He started using TikToks for you page and Instagram's explore page as dating apps, as many people his age do, but admittedly ignore the pitfalls. Like, James, please, let's be serious here. Let's pull up this article. One in five adult members of Gen Z self-identify as LGBTQ. No, there is not a lack of people that are gay in the 20 to 25 age range. Like, I am so sorry you are out of touch. You are just trying to excuse your disgusting behavior. And also, you are literally a beauty influencer. You are a makeup YouTuber. I would bet that the majority of men that you meet due to your industry are gay. I think he comes from a dimension that's big on musical theater. This is a you problem, not a society problem. Somebody commented and said, excuse me, wait. He said that he had to be a groomer because there's no gay influencers of his own age. Stop it. Another person said, I feel like there are at least five people who fit the bill on any given season of Drag Race. Another person said, wow, James Charles is so brave for being the only gay famous person between the ages of 20 and 25. Stunning and brave. Truly, he is desperate, he is creepy, and he is out of touch. He also admitted that his younger brother, who was a model in New York City, has not spoken to him since these allegations came out two years ago, which I think speaks volumes. Because if his own brother, who lived with him and was in so many videos with him, they were very, very close, they did merch drops together, they seemed like best friends. If he 
is willing to cut contact and not speak to his own brother for two years. I think we can assume that there is a lot more happening behind closed doors and this is actually very, very serious. Maybe even more serious than what we are seeing online. Now, the one thing that the article did get right was this line after talking about James's, you know, comeback video, which was YouTube's most disliked video of that entire week. And the author wrote, so Charles kept posting, driven by what I'd armchair therapist diagnose as a compulsive need for online interaction. It's not just his brand, it's been his entire personality since grade school. Again, no shit. The man wants attention. He is desperate for attention and desperate for interactions with people online. No wonder he preyed upon young men who follow him and adore him. Again, it's the power imbalance. He knew he was gonna get a response. He knew he could get that attention. Hi, Kevin, I'm your biggest fan. And then when he was canceled and he had to go a couple of months without posting, a couple of months without that attention, he was starved and he's trying again. And he thought that this puff piece would really help him. And then the article ended with this, which I just thought was insane. In our own messy, imperfect way, maybe we're starting to catch calibrate our responses to the severity of an offender's offense. Maybe we've arrived at the point where we are doling out appropriate levels of social censure. Or maybe we're just tired of keeping score and ready to succumb to the path of least resistance, letting our feeds figure it out for us. So. According to this author and according to Cosmopolitan, apparently, that is totally fine and we'll just let our feeds figure out. We'll just let the algorithm take care of it. But God forbid somebody tweets something that goes against political groupthink or you follow somebody that is politically right wing, then no, then we'll dox you. We will get you fired from your job. And if you're in Canada, maybe your bank accounts will be frozen. That is not letting the algorithm figure it out. That is being utterly hypocritical. That is disgusting. But that is sadly the state of our society. This piece is an embarrassment. And I really just want to know how much his PR team paid Paid to make this happen. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the comment section and that you maybe even learned something new. If you have not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode.